But we face a great danger. The great danger I first mentioned is this inferiority complex. God did not love the Christians in the upper room more than you. There was no formula for knowing God in Azusa Street that is greater or mysterious or secret to us. And who went through this better than anyone that ever lived was Joshua. Joshua had to replace Moses. I'm telling you, that is like challenging Betty Crocker to a bake-off. When he did this, he complained to God. I've got two and a half million people that are stiff-necked. Their mind is on Moses, the man, and he rehearsed all of the things. He no, doubtless paced in front of God and he said, look at the job you've given me. The people are worse and the greatest leader that ever lived is gone and I'm in his place. For those of you that are older, it's like the second Darren on Bewitched. <laughs> wow, that's just wrong. What I'm loving, I'm watching the millennials like, what? <laughs> what? So Joshua said to God, I can't replace this man. He called fire from the sky. He called fleas, frogs, turned the Nile into blood, split an ocean. Then he said, give me a break. His face glowed in the dark. And God had to convince him of a statement that I want you to get in your heart. You can't have it until you put your hand over your chest right now. And you look at me. God said to Joshua, that's all true. Everything you just said about Moses, absolutely true. But you've forgotten one thing. I was the secret to his success. I was the reason he could do what he did. It wasn't him, it wasn't his holiness, it wasn't his talent, it wasn't even his opportunity. It was me. I'm the reason. And the reason you need to understand this tent crusade is dangerous is because it wasn't endorsed by man. It was endorsed by God. It wasn't brought to Colorado. You can go ahead and clap. It wasn't brought here by man. It was brought here by God. This is God's meeting. This is God's moment. And he looked at Joshua and he said, I'm going to explain to you why you're not going to fail. Because I'm going to enter into a covenant with you. I'm going to enter into a relationship with you. And as I was with Moses, so will I be with you. The same God that was in Azusa Street is with us. He hasn't changed. And the power that he's going to release through us is not inferior to any other time. We look at the healings under William Branham, under A.A. A. Allen, under Jack Coe. We look at what happened under Oral Roberts and Miss Kuhlman. And we think there was some special breed that they were. And indeed, they were extraordinary vessels of God. But the one who healed was Christ. And he's in this tent right now and he has not changed I maybe you believe that I maybe you believe that here is the subtle truth that we need it's very easy to misread this it said Joshua said to the people sanctify yourselves for tomorrow the Lord will do wonders among you the subtle truth is this. It does not say, sanctify yourself so that God will do wonders among you. He said, sanctify yourselves because ready or not, they're coming. Whether you feel you deserve them or not, whether you're ready or not, they are coming. 
We didn't earn this. We can't buy this. We can't make it happen. So our energy's got to go away from that and be placed somewhere else. And that is this. Cleanse yourselves because wonders are coming. Not because we need to cleanse ourselves so that they will come. The fixation with earning revival or miracles has left us unprepared to steward them when they arrive. Our energy's got to be here. It's already moving. God's already at work. Let's start getting rid of our doubt, our fear, and our inferiority. Get rid of your hesitancy and start to confess with your mouth. Satan, you are defeated. You can't have America. You will not have my children. You're already judged. The blood is against you. The judgment of God is against you. The decrees in heaven are being fulfilled right before our eyes. Hallelujah. We need to fast. We need to pray. We need to declare. We need to fight. But sometimes we need to understand that we've been heard in heaven. The angel had to tell Daniel, listen, your prayer went through. You were heard. It happened. And God already authorized it. And maybe the prince of Persia stopped it for a while. But I'm here to tell you, it's broken through. And I'm telling you right now, every pastor in America that will begin preaching a simple salvation message is going to see the front of their church flooded. Why? Because the soul winning spirit is back. The evangelism is back. It's not coming back. It's already here. It's happening. It's working right now. That's why we got to interrupt what we're doing and allow people to be saved. How many of you want to do the right thing? I know that's a simple question, but look at me and raise your hand. How many of you want to do the right thing? How many of you want to do the right thing as a husband and a father? The right thing as a minister, the right thing as a wife and a mom, grandparent, how many of you want to do the right thing? Raise your hand. Say, you know, I'm going to tell you about doing the right thing. I have lived to watch stupid things done with revival. Stupid things. If Lou and I had a chance to compare notes, we've spent decades watching the church come so close and then misfire because the hand of man would get on it. I don't want the hand of man to get on this. And I'm going to be nasty about it. No one's going to exalt or turn Mario Murillo into a celebrity. I don't want to be that. I will run from that. I'm not the man of the hour. Jesus Christ is the man of the hour. He is the voice of the hour. We don't need another. We don't need a Christian superstar. We need a morning star. We need the son of righteousness. Anybody here? 